So recently I've been doing a lot of bigger paintings like the one behind me here. And as I've been working on those bigger paintings, I'm realizing that my current palette setup that I have isn't quite cutting it. It's just a little too small. And I find when I'm working on the palette, I end up not having basically, well, basically as I'm working on the bigger paintings, um, I use a lot more paint, obviously, because they're, they're just so much larger. And um, with my style of painting, I like my paint to have kind of this thick texture and to be able to see the paint. So as I'm translating my style from painting smaller paintings to making these larger paintings, um, I also need to mix larger and larger piles of paint. And this takes up a lot of space on the palette. And I found that for a smaller painting, maybe I could fit all of the colors and all the mixtures I need on my usual size palette. But for these larger paintings, I often fill up the whole palette with just one color mixture. So this has pushed me to wanting to get a larger palette um, to kind of upgrade my palette setup so that I have a lot of space to mix lots of paint for these bigger canvases. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today. And as a quick note, this video isn't sponsored by anyone, but if you want to support my work, you can purchase my paintings on my website, you can join my Patreon, or you can share my video with a friend. All of these things really help. So here's my current palette setup. It is a sheet of tempered glass. I think it's from New Wave, um, a 12 by 16 palette. And it works pretty well for the smaller paintings that I'm working on. Um, you can see I can mix several different groups of colors um, and I have all my colors laid out here. And then I just have it sitting on this table and then I have the paints that I use to refill basically under here with some other materials. So, but as you can see, like I'm using really big tubes of paint, I'm using other big tools and it, it's just getting really messy really quickly. So I wanna make all of this kind of twice as big or even three times as big so I have more space to work with the colors. Um, one of the other issues that I'm curious about here and that I'm trying to see if I can figure out is, so usually with this palette, I end up putting it in this um, new wave kind of stay wet, or Masterson stay wet palette box and I close it up and that keeps the paints wet between painting sessions. Um, with my larger palette, they don't make boxes that big. So um, I'm gonna try to find a different way to keep the, pens, the paints wet between painting sessions. So let's see how it goes. So here's the size of the new palette that I want to use. It's 24 by 36, so way bigger than my old one. Gives me a lot of room for paint mixing, um, which I'm really excited about. But this is just a regular sheet of glass. So to kind of protect the edges and also to prevent the paint from drying out, I'm going to put it in this floater frame, which I'm going to put together. Um, and then my idea is that I'll put the glass in the floater frame, I'll seal it so that it's airtight, and then I can cover this with, um, with like saran wrap or something between painting sessions so that the paint stays wet. So we'll see if that actually works. And then to support this big palette, I got this big restaurant style um, metal cart that it's, it has wheels and it's like a two tiered table. So I can set the palette on top and then I'll still have stuff for my paints beneath it. So let's put it together. Okay, so I did the first part, the table's done. It's taller than my old palette setup that I was using, so not sure how I'm gonna like that, but um, wanna give it a try. And yeah, and the next thing I need to do is prepare the frame, put the glass in the frame, and then I can put it all together.
Okay, so I assembled part of the frame and now I'm gonna put the glass in and then I'll put the last part of the frame on and then seal it all up. So the gap between the glass and the frame was bigger than I thought it would be, so I'm going to need to get more stuff to seal it, um, but then I should be pretty much done. So I tested out the palette today, um, working on this larger painting, and it was really nice to have this really large mixing space, so I love that. Um, and now I'm going to try to cover it with, some, with a cardboard box and just weigh it down. Um, so that hopefully that seals the top enough um, and it makes it so that it, the paint doesn't dry overnight. And as I do with my smaller palette, I'm going to try to put some of this clove oil on some paper towels with the paint to try to slow down the drying process. Okay, so here's my setup. Um, so I have a cardboard box that I put on top of the frame for the palette and then I've weighed it down with books. And it's definitely not airtight. Um, we'll see how it works, but um, I'm hoping that it'll reduce the airflow around the paint and the palette just enough so that the paint doesn't dry overnight. So we'll see how it is tomorrow. So here's my final setup and I'm just loving it. It is so nice to have so much more mixing space, especially when I'm working on large canvases. I just feel like I need to mix a lot of paint to be able to work at a large scale. So having this big palette, I think is just a total game changer. And I love how I have mixing space on top and then I also have some space for my paints and other supplies below so that they're easy access. Plus, I like how the palette has wheels so I can move it around really easily. Um, the one thing I might change is it's still a little tall, so I might consider sawing the legs to make it a bit shorter, but otherwise I think it's a really good solution. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments and if it gave you any inspiration for things you can do in your studio. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.